Hey guys, just wanted to take a second to talk about everything that I see coming down the pike, specifically related to the economic impacts of the COVID-19 virus. In our last video, I mentioned that this is a pivotal moment and I stress the importance of staying strong mentally. That's going to be a theme going forward. What started out as a homesteading channel is sort of morphing into something a little different. We're still gonna be centered around growing food, self-sufficiency, and, um, and being self-reliant. However, it would be um, disingenuous for me to not talk about what's going on right now. We are on the verge of an economic tsunami. I don't say these words lightly, and I'm not saying these words to scare anyone. In fact, I, I almost hesitated to even uh, do this topic because I know that people are already scared, and that's definitely not my intention with these videos. However, I feel like I need to talk about these things because it's what's going on right now and I want people to be prepared for it. As I film this, we're currently in week three of the coronavirus uh, essentially locking down the country. I mean, there's uh, stay at home orders in effect pretty much all over. Uh, all non-essential businesses are closed. Schools are closed. Just about everything is closed. And I, you know, this is going to have some serious economic repercussions uh, coming down the line. And that's what we want to talk about today is what those repercussions are and how to prepare for them. Now, as a small business owner myself, I understand what it takes to run a small business, what it costs. And I have a fair idea of, of what the operating expenses are for your average small business in town. I mean, all the accounts that we sell our vegetables and CBD products to are small businesses. We're not selling to any big, you know, corporate entities and every single one of them is going to be affected by this. So I, in this, I am, I am truly worried for all the small businesses out there because there is a good chance that when this quarantine is lifted, a lot of small businesses won't reopen their doors. They're being forced to close their doors, yet they still have their normal operating expenses. They still have to pay rent, utilities, they still have payroll expenses, they've got their cost of goods. And it's really hard for any business to just shut down for what may end up being two months with, and not have any uh, cash coming in. The thing that really sucks about this is that a lot of these small businesses were probably just making it. You know, they were just starting to round the curve and it is extremely hard to make it as a small business nowadays because there is a big guy in every industry that you're competing with. If you're a farm, you're competing with the big guys out west. If you're a retailer, you're competing with Walmart and Amazon. If you're a restaurant, you're competing with Applebee's and every other chain. And so it's really tough to make it as a small business. And the people that have made it, they've made it because they've been very crafty, very creative, they work ex exceptionally hard. And, and a lot of these were just getting over that hump where maybe, maybe they were just starting to show a profit and then this hits, which is unfortunate because this is totally unrelated to anything that they did. So this is hitting their business especially hard and it, they had nothing to do with it. It was totally out of their control. The government is literally telling them they cannot operate. And so every single day that they are not bringing in cash, and they still have their expenses, they are essentially sinking further and further into the hole. We have some banks predicting 32% unemployment, which is just a crazy number. And if that's the case, there's gonna be major economic repercussions uh, that ripple out from that. You've got pension plans, 401ks, um, even the currency itself, all of that is at risk of losing its stability. And I'm not saying this to scare people. I don't want to scare anybody, but I want people to at least acknowledge the possibility and, and at least acknowledge the fact that we are in uncharted waters right now and that it's very important to take each day very seriously and take the steps right now to prepare for whatever comes down the line. So what we're going to talk about in this video is five direct steps that you can take today and start putting that into action today so that regardless of what happens in the future, you as an individual and you as a small business owner will be better off. So let's get into it. Okay, step number one, we need to reevaluate what has value. Okay, typically people will think, you know, stocks, bonds, cash, if you have a lot of that stuff, you're wealthy. We, and, and I'm not saying that stuff is gonna become worthless, I'm saying that it has no intrinsic value. So what we wanna find here as an individual and as a small business is invest 
in things that have intrinsic value regardless of what happens. So let me give you an example. Behind me here, I've got our, our BCS two-wheel tractor. This tool has immense value for me because of the amount of work that I can do with it. That work allows me to grow crops, which then bring value to other people. Behind me still is a shovel and this old pickup truck. Now you can see this old pickup truck might not be worth a lot of money, but it actually provides a lot of value because it allows me to deliver my crops and to haul things like gravel, compost, mulch, uh, whatever I need. And that's gonna go a long way in times of financial hardship. Okay, step number two, lean out any unnecessary expenses. You need to figure out the minimum amount your business can operate on with zero cash coming in. And that's gonna tell you how stringent you need to be with your budget. Let me give you an example, okay? When the extinction of the dinosaurs happened, the dinosaurs were wiped out immediately. What survived was this little rodent size uh, species, a little bit bigger than a rabbit, like this guy here. And they were able to survive because they were able to get by with a very low caloric intake. They were able to nibble on some plants and just survive that way. And what happened after the dinosaurs died off? This species thrived because there was nothing there to eat it. It was now the biggest animal and actually all humans are descendants from these rodent-like mammals. So just an interesting uh, thought that it's not always the big guys that survive. It's the ones that can get real lean and don't need much and they can get through almost anything. And this applies to individual households just as well as businesses. So from a household perspective, you know, something like making your own meals. It's so easy to go through that drive through but you are getting upcharged on everything you buy. You can get better food, you can eat better and cheaper if you go to the grocery store and prepare your own meals. Make a big batch of meals ahead of time so you have them for the entire week. Another thing is, of course, grow a garden. There's so many little things that you can do, but grow a garden. Seeds are cheap. Okay, and the amount of food that one seed can produce is insane. Also, talk to lenders, landlords, utility companies, see if they'll work with you. A lot of credit card companies are waiving payments and interest for the month of April and even the month of May. So reach out to your lenders and see if there's something that they'll do to cut you some slack during these times. There's a lot of programs in place and that's gonna lead us to step number three, which is obtain loan approval before you need it. So having that access to capital is gonna be huge when credit starts to freeze up. And right now the government is putting a lot of liquidity into the system. They want this money to go to individuals and small businesses and of course the big corporations, but there's stuff in there for individuals and small businesses alike. So right now is the time to get ahead of the curve, reach out to your lender and see what, a, what loan options are available. Because even if you don't end up taking it out, just have that credit line in case you need it because this is all about survival. And at the end of the day, your survival as an individual or as a business depends on having enough cash to pay your bills and, and feed yourself. I'm gonna put links in the show notes of, of various programs that exist. I've already applied for a few of them. If you're a farmer, reach out to the FSA. If you're a small business, reach out to the SBA. These programs are here to help you right now, but I think they're gonna fill up quick. So I would get your application in as soon as possible. Okay, step number four, get ready to adapt. As an individual, you need to figure out what skills you possess that bring value to other people. There's all types of side hustles and odd jobs out there that you can do to make a little bit extra money during these times. For instance, check out this big tree here. <laughs> I really need somebody to come by with a chainsaw, cut this thing up into firewood so that I, you know, and split all these logs so I can put it in the barn. There's a million little examples of things like that. Yes, I can do that myself, but I just don't have the time right now. So, you know, really starting to train your mind to look and see how you can bring value to people in your community. As a, as a, as a business, it's going to be really important to figure out ways to innovate going forward, okay? You might need to change your business model away from something it's never been. If you're a restaurant, obviously you need to incorporate takeout. But let's say even if you're a landscaping company, Maybe you need to adapt your business model to set up gardens for people. I mean, there's just so many ways that you can adapt to a changing market, but you need to be on it because it's changing right now. And, and if you wait, other people are gonna hop on that train and you're gonna be left behind. So now is the time to be thinking, how can we do things a little bit differently to get by? Okay, and the last step to take, the fifth step to take in this is 
reach out to your community. Now, whether that's as a small business, that's your customer base or your vendors, reach out and see how they're doing during this time. See if there's anything you can do and let them know how you're doing. It's important to stay connected. As individuals, we need to reach out to our neighbors. We need to reach out to people in our immediate community. This is gonna be very important because those are the people that if we fall on hard times, we're gonna to need to lean on. So be generous, you know? I always say err on the side of generosity. So, you know, maybe just stop by that neighbor and, and drop off, you know, drop off some food, drop off some extra vegetables you've got, whatever. But this is gonna be important going forward that we stay connected as a community. You know, just to wrap up, uh, during the Great Depression, and you know, I'm not trying to say that's where we're headed, but there's a very good chance that that's where we're headed. Um, they were thrifty, you know? They made do with what they had. They, they stayed connected with their neighbors. They helped them out when they needed it. And they did whatever job was available to put food on the table. See, back then there weren't really any social programs, so people weren't expecting something to come their way. And even though there's these social programs now, you should not be dependent on them, okay? Take it, if you qualify, sure, take advantage of it. Right now, this is a matter of survival. But don't become dependent on it because, you know what, the, the website goes down and you can't, fill out your form or whatever, and then you don't get support for that week, you do not want to be dependent on the government for your sustenance. You want to be dependent on yourself and your community, the people you know and trust. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay strong. Leave us a comment. Subscribe. Let me know how you guys are doing. Like, we're not there yet. What do you guys see coming? I mean, this is just my personal opinion. I don't know. In a month, everything might go back to normal. But... For right now, I think we need to take these steps so that regardless of what happens, we're stronger for it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you all next time. If you guys like this video and you'd like to see more like it, leave us a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, visit us at greenshinefarms.com and follow us on Instagram at greenshinefarms. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. can't say that. No. No, of course the system cares about you.